I do not own a copyright to Judge Judy. I just feel that Jesus Christ he spoke to me again in regards to these two cases. Is Judge Judy. Bridget Nichols is suing her ex-boyfriend, Alton Brown, for the return of a car, unpaid loans for car payments, rent and mental anguish. Order. All rise. Yeah, it's Kitchener 201 on the calendar of Madam Nichols versus Brown. Thank you. You're welcome, Judge. The parties have been sworn in. You may be seated. Folks, have a seat. Miss Nichols, this case generally has to do with an automobile. This is your ex-boyfriend. And for whatever reason, which is not important to get into right now, you wanted to purchase a car, according to your complaint. You had the down payment, and you were prepared to make payments on the car. For some reason, perhaps because of credit or whatever else it was, the car was placed in Mr. Brown's name. Is there a loan on the car? Yes. And the loan is also in your name? Yes, it is. Well, now you are no longer a couple. And when you broke up, it was an unpleasant evening that caused the breakup. And you acknowledged the fact, Ms. Nichols, that you were very drunk that night. Yes. Mr. Brown decided to take the car, and you want either the car back, or you want him to pay you what you've put into it. No. I either want the car back or the money back. What money? The money I put into the car. Well, that's what I just said, if you were paying attention. Okay. <laughs> On what evening, Mr. Brown, did you take the car? Do you remember the date? June 7th, 12.30 in the morning. How drunk were you, Miss Nichols? I had a blackout. Where had you been? I had been at a nightclub called The Fleece. How did you get there? I drove. In the your car? car? I drove the car. How did you get back? I got back in the car. Who drove? Miss Charlotte drove. Mm -hmm. So let me say this to you. If you want the car back from Mr. Brown, you're going to have to get the loan in your name, and you are going to have to get the car out of his name. Okay? That is going to be my ruling, and I'm going to explain clearly why to you. Mr. Brown doesn't have to be responsible for your drunk driving. He is responsible for your drunk driving if you're driving in a car that he owns. He risks his property. He risks his credit. He risks his own car. He risks whatever income he may have. If, Ms. Nichols, you get into an accident and hurt someone in that car. Now, it is also clear, I want you to pay careful attention to this. When you purchase a car and you drive it off the lot, it loses value. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows that it loses value. It could lose 10%, 20%, 30% or more. So the fact that you put in a down payment and was paying the payments and was on making it. the payments on it every month, every month, just pay attention. And was making payments on it uh -huh. doesn't mean the car is valued at the same way as it was when you purchased it. Uh -huh. Now. This was not Mr. Brown's car. This was your car. Yes, I drove it every day. Just listen, he doesn't want this car. He just doesn't want you to have it in his name. So far, am I right, Mr. Brown? Correct. Right. So if you want the car, you have to get the loan on the car in your name. When you do that, Mr. Brown will be more than happy to turn over the car. There wasn't a loan on it. Well, how could you tell me that there were no payments on the car if you were making payments, according to you, every month on the car? Can I explain something? Can I go back? I paid the down payment on the car, and I've been making the payments every cent. He took a loan out on the truck for big. I did. You see, she just, I did. But I've been paying the, the payments on the loan. I, I have bank statements. I don't care. That's what has to happen. How much was the car that you purchased? The car was... A, $34,000. Well, as soon as you get $34,000 out of his name, you can have it back. Otherwise, you can't have it back. 
He's not taking on your responsibility. So I don't get the money back that I paid on the car? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. You don't get the money back because the car has depreciated. And what happens is if he is forced to sell the car, he's going to lose money. And the only one who's going to be whole is you, which means you get the money back that you put down as a down payment, the $1,800 in your payments, right? Mm -hmm. You get that back. Mm -hmm. He's out the money that he, if he's going to sell the car because the car is not worth what it was when you purchased it. Mm -hmm. And the only one who's going to end up whole is you, and that's because of your bad behavior. Because your bad behavior, by having a blackout and driving drunk on June 7th, caused this whole debacle. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. That's great, Miss Nichols. So this is what you have to do. Get yourself a loan, and you can have the car back, and you have 30 days to do it. Will you hold on to the car for 30 days? Yes, sir, but I'm making a payment. It's my car. Just a second. It's not going to be your car if she gets the loan in her name within 30 days. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand that. Great. Because it was always intended to be her car. She put down the down payment on she the car. She didn't put down the down payment. Listen. Listen to me carefully. Just, Judy, can I say some bottom line? He's not giving you a car if you drove drunk so that he is responsible. She did. Period. End of discussion. Listen. I don't want to hear you. Somebody who has a blackout at a club from drinking. And she didn't shouldn't drive be driving. Home. What? She didn't drive her home. She drove home herself. I don't care. She shouldn't be driving you know, home if she, has, if she has blackout. You was in the van. Mr. Brown. Hey. Okay. So let's deal with the second thing. That feels to be a car. You claim you lent him money to make a truck payment. Tell me about it. When? He took, a, he took the loan out on his truck, and I've been paying the loan for the truck ever since he took the loan out. So you're saying I ain't help you do nothing? You didn't help me. I've been paying Just the loan. Just a second. You say it was a loan yes. to him. How many payments did you make on the truck for him? On the loan that he took out for the truck? It was three. And why did you make three payments on this truck loan for him? Because he told me he was going to pay me back. And did he pay you back after the first one? No. Did he pay you back after the second one? No, he told me he was going to pay me back in the future when he got back on his feet. Cause I he paid back for it. So what he told you was, Ms. Nichols, that he was going to pay you back when he got back on his feet. Mm -hmm. Are you back on your feet? I've been on my feet. You mean back on my feet. I've been well, I want to know years. what you thought he meant when you said pay you back when he's back on his feet. Because he pays child support and they're taking more money out of his check right now. And he, switches, he switches his taxes around every now and then to get more money out of his check. How long was the two of you together, Miss Nichols? Three years. Three years. And how long did you live together? Three years. And how long ago did you make these three payments for him on his truck? The payments started in February. February of what year? No, I'm sorry, in March. March of what year? Of this year. So you made a payment in March, April, and May? Yes. Show me. You have the truck, Mr. Brown? Yes, I do. She made payments for you in March, April, and May? I made payments. We both shook in her bank statements. That's the only reason why she got bank payments, because I gave her money. And she went, went to the bank on Saturdays. And she put it in there and deposited it, and then okay, it's just a second. Is what you're telling me that there were bills paid out of her account? Out of her account. But you gave her money? I gave her money. Okay. We had I, to go to the bank on Saturday morning and paid a card note. I was giving her 250 She was giving 200 She had taken it in the bank, go in there, we go back home, I call it in. You did not have a bank account? I did not have a bank account. I paid $900 a month child support. Well, what does that have to do with not having a bank account? Well... It's like I owe my rear, so if I try to save money, they take it right out of right your bank account. And they drain it. So and she you understood give, that, and she. So would, just a second. So you were giving her money. Yes. Okay. What's next, Miss Nichols? Next is mental anguish. Yours or mine? <laughs> <laughs> you take the phone. Now, we're ready to deal with the counter claim. Now, Mr. Brown, it is your claim that while she was having a blackout, she bit you. Yes, she and did. you were injured, and you have medical bills. Yes, I do. I'd like to take a look at the medical records, please, and the photographs. And this was on. June I was injured too, and I had bruises too. And this was on June seventh. June seventh. Uh, I would like to see them, please. What? My medical records. I know she got a bad Miss Judy, I don't have a loan on the car. I bought the car. There's not a loan on there. Then what were you making payments on? On on the payments for the car. That's a loan. It's a payment. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't. She Just a second. Did you buy a thirty-four thousand dollar car? Take your hands off your head. 
I'm asking you a question. Hmm. Did you buy a thirty-four thousand dollar car? Yes, I bought the car. We were going to put the car in my according name. According to your, we were going to put the car in my name. According to your, your you went upstairs. Your case is dismissed. Now let's get to your counterclaim. Tell me what happened on the night of June seventh. On the night of June sixth, uh, actually it was on the night of June sixth. It was a Wednesday. Okay. 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 Oh. I don't care about going outside. <laughs> I'm the dinner. <laughs> and the other door. Which one? This one. Fine with me. <laughs> okay. It was the night of Wednesday, June 6th. I was in a bed asleep about 11.30. Miss Nichols came in, animated. For no reason. I have no re no deal. Because you was trying to get some sex. You know. Okay. Stop lying. Uh, it, well, whatever. You was trying to get some sex. Stop lying. So she came in. And I wouldn't give it to you. Which okay. That's all fine and That's all, all fine and dandy. I'm done with her. Yeah. You stay, Mr. Brown. I pay it anyway. Don't speak. You want to go? You can go. Come on, Cheryl. Get out of here. You can go if you want to. You can write for a girl. No, I'm not even stupid already. Well, I have to get up first to our Judge Judy continues at all. We were face to face, and then all of a sudden she just spit in my face. So I grabbed her, and that's when she lunged for the top of my shoulder. Once I felt the bite, I threw her on the bed, and I'm just like, talk to me, what's wrong? You know what I mean? Talk to me. And later today... You went out with some friends, got drunk, and drove the car into a river. That's incorrect. What happened to the car? <laughs> Expert surgeons from Good Samaritan Hospital and St. Catherine of Siena Medical Center offer you access to the revolutionary Da Vinci robotic system. This technology takes surgery beyond the limits of the human hand. The Da Vinci's wrist and arm technology... Jesus Christ, he is truly Lord and Savior, and he loves all of you so much. He does. I just feel lately my two brothers and sisters in Jesus that he's been speaking to me a lot lately. In dreams, random Bible verses via my phone, the television. And I just feel like he has definitely spoken to me a lot. I made several other videos yesterday, if I'm correct, that I'm going to be posting up on my YouTube channel, where I believe God gave me a message. That's what I firmly believe. Today is November the 15th, 2012, Friday. It's the evening, the repeat of... The show that came on today on Judge Judy at 4 o'clock, the repeat comes on every weekday at 10. Whatever plays at 4, it plays again at 10 through 11. So I started recording this at 10.30 and it is now 10.42 p.m. The gospel of Jesus is to repent or perish. He wants all to be saved, even me. I have to repent daily too to be saved. And how we do that is we confess that Jesus is Lord. He died on the cross many years ago for the sins of the world. And it's by His grace through our faith that we're saved. We just have to pray to Jesus for the power of the Holy Spirit to come and live inside of our hearts and help us to repent, turn away from all things that grieve Him that have crucified him, that we might live. And then he'll be pleased with us. And we know his heart, and, we're, and our hearts are consecrated to his. And he speaks to us. I go to the gas station, such a small amount, that I forget how to put gas in my car. And it's not just these owners giving the bullseye price. And even in the next case that's coming up, it may be a sign from Jesus to me to sue Rosa for the $1,300 that she owes me, the $1,295. I really felt Jesus spoke to me today. Then all of a sudden, um, after I get up early today, at about 2 o'clock p.m., if I'm correct, I feel like Jesus spoke to me in my dreams about my brother, the dream that I don't really remember. Don't know what it was about. But then about 8.30 p.m. today, after I got out the shower and was pretty much naked, getting ready, I heard my door knock. I don't know who was there, but I think it was him. Then I go for a random Bible verse, and I see 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 27. 
This was after I got a comment on my videos saying that Yahusha and Yahuwah are the true names. And I felt that with First Kings chapter 8, verse 27, God is not limited. We do not put him in a box like these people are doing. She kept talking about my sister. My sister, I'm like, what's wrong? What's wrong? Right? So I got up out the bed. I stood up. We were face to face. And then all of a sudden, she just spit in my face. Just like, yeah. And I'm like, whoa. So I grabbed her. I grabbed her by her arms. And that's when she lunged for the top of my shoulder. And I still had her because my adrenaline was rushing at the time. I just got woke up. Once I felt the bite, I threw her on the bed. I got her on the bed. And I'm just like, talk to me. What's wrong? You know what I mean? Talk to me. So she's still trying to swing from my face and everything. So I got from around her shoulder and I grabbed both of her arms, you know, trying to pin her down so she wouldn't hit me. So when I did that, that's when she reached for my forearm. Can I see the bill? The bill for what? You said you had $1,088 in medical bills. Uh, that was pain and suffering. All I want to see, sir, is a medical bill. I don't have it. I went to urgent care. I don't have no medical Goodbye. Why is that excuse to me step up? He was trying to get some sex. She talking about sex and all that. And I didn't want to give it to him. Spit in my face, like said, she don't remember nothing. She had bruises, I had bruises. He just kind to paint the picture the way she wanted, but... He just was a whip and went to the doctor and got some... I could be weak or whatever she wanted to call me. A and D ointment put on it. At the end of the day, I'm still a man and... And got sent home. You're not about to put your hands on me, so... I didn't go to the doctor. I'm not a whip. You know, she just bit her. And, and no more boyfriends, please. And it says that she ain't with me no more. And now, the next case. All parties in the matter of Avery versus Laughlin. Step forward, please. Jacob Ryan Avery is suing his former friend, Ricky Laughlin, for the unpaid balance on a car he sold it. Ryan claims a drunken Ricky drove the vehicle into a river and then stopped paying. Mr. Laughlin, I'm going to start with you, sir. You were the plaintiff, knew each other. You were friends, is that right? Yes, ma'am. And there came a time that he was selling a car and you wanted to purchase the car. That car was a 1999 Pontiac Grand Am. Correct. That was sometime in November of 2011. Yes, ma'am. Now, Mr. Avery sold you the car. Yes, ma'am. For $1,500. Yes, ma'am. And you took the car, and according to you, you made two payments on the car of $100 each. Yes, ma'am. Leaving a balance of $1,300. Yes, ma'am. And then you went out with some friends, according to what I read here, got drunk and drove the car into a river. That's incorrect. Well, you tell me what happened in January of 2012. Well, like I did have a, a couple of drinks. I so had a couple of drinks and? Right. And a friend of mine wanted to go to a friend of his house. I said and? I wasn't going to drive. Okay. So he drove. So you gave him the car. Right. Were you in the car? Yes, ma'am. So you couldn't drive, so you gave your friend the car and? We went down a dirt road. That's all it was, a dirt road. We come to a creek, and it's a low water bridge. We had, two days prior to that, we had crossed it several times. So the day that we went across that, I guess it drained earlier down the road or something. I guess. Yeah. Right? Plus the car went into the river. No, it's a low water bridge. We crossed it. What happened to the car? Uh, I guess the water washed out and <laughs> washed some of the road out. We went in just a little bit, and the front end sunk right in there into the water. There isn't that much difference between what I said and what you said, but since this is a television program, you've made it you know, a little more interesting for us. Just to be continuous in a moment. You totaled his car. You and your, no, no, you no, and your drunk right. friends. I went to the impound the next day and started it up. They Not couldn't the next have gone to the impound the next day, sir, because you told me that you were in jail for two days. Correct. I made a mistake. We yes, have made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> So also, guys, unexpectedly at about 8.30 p.m. tonight, I had heard, like I said to you a moment ago, my door knocks on my door with no text messages or calls in advance as to who is going to show up at my place tonight. So I thought it was my brother. And it probably was. I listened for any voices that I might have heard from outside of my door, but I didn't hear anything. It made me laugh for some 10 or so minutes, knocks here and there, light knocks. 
I opened up my door, my Jesus picture was still there, not ripped up, which I'm so thankful to God for, because I don't play no games. I know Jesus is Lord and Savior. I don't limit him. I know he died on the cross for the sins of the world years ago, and he's coming back again soon to judge both the living and the dead. And he is holy. No sin is found in him. He hates sin. He speaks to me. I'm not just a hearer of the word, I'm also a doer. We must be doers too of Jesus' word. So I think before I heard the knocks on the door, right after I got out of the bathroom, showering, I had gone to my phone and I saw that a comment was left on my YouTube channel under a video of mine. Mary began physical therapy at St. Joseph's Called Palace. Called some of probably my religious God that died if I'm correct. So and this comment stated that Yahuwah, like I said a moment ago, and Yahusha, or Yahushua, are the true names of God. And I didn't read the whole entire comment. But that might have been a sign from God that my brother is still in those similar beliefs. It's just that he doesn't now believe ever since August 2012, as well as Rosa that there is no savior, but he believes that one must call on the Hebrew name of God in order to be saved, but that there's just no savior, ridiculous, it's lies that I'm not falling for, because I'm praying constantly and God speaks to me, he really does. Those with a whole heart who have truly come into him, come unto him with a whole heart, repented of their sins, continually repent daily. Jesus, he speaks to them. And um, right after I got rid of my Sprite box, I put all the cans in my refrigerator. I actually looked and I saw HMJ75 and then 777. I felt like Hamashiach, Jesus, 75, 777 underneath there. Jesus gave me confirmation not to listen to any lies once again. We had to perish. The car went into the water. Yes, ma'am. He wants the balance of his money, right? Correct. So? And uh, I went to jail that day. The cops showed up, and we got to What did they have to do with Mr. Avery? They took the car, and they put it in impound. Well, when I got out of jail, I was going to get it out of impound, but I didn't have the money at the time. So I told him about it. He went to get it. Instead of paying it to get it out, he signed it, the car over and just said, let him have it. How long were you in jail? Uh, two days. And how much money was it to get the car out of impound? 150. And how much money did you have? I didn't have any at the time. Well, then how were you going to get the car out of impound? When I got paid. Listen, he owed $1,300 for his car. Period. What else? Mr. Ash, we don't have to be totally honest. Uh, Ms. Lawson did give me uh, one payment of $150 for the car when he received it. The very next day, he asked me if I had deposited that money to the bank. I said that no, I had not, and he asked me if he could actually have that money back because he had a personal matter that he had to take care of. I did he tell you what the personal matter was? He did. It was just something personal with we put in his family that he needed to take care of, and I said that What did you okay. need the money back for? I don't remember. But you needed the money back. Right. So he gave you the money back. Right. When did you give him money again? Uh, that Friday. How much that did you give him? That same week, I gave him a uh, hundred dollars. And then? Then the next week, I gave him another hundred dollars. Did he give you any other money? The only money he gave me was the one fifty, and I actually did give him a receipt that he paid. And then after that, what he stated was he got paid every two weeks. It's within. So very December. similar. And he said that he was going to go and take care of it. I gave Rosa. A receipt to that she had given me a certain amount, if I'm correct. And she said that she would pay me, I think, a certain time. She gets paid, too, every two weeks. He said he was having a hard time, you know, financially, trying to get some things together. At that point, I said, if you cannot afford the car, just bring the car back. From that point there, I never ever heard from him after that. I had called him, I had left him messages, he no longer would Well, as a matter of fact, you're shaking your head no, sir, but I'm looking at your answer, and your answer says just about that. Your answer says, by the end of December, Ryan started harassing me about the car. He mentioned that he had another buyer, but I told him a deal was a deal, and he just couldn't change his mind. Well, that's what he said. That's not what I said. But this is what you said, sir. This is your answer. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Closed captioning sponsored by...
But Jen's car wasn't handling well. So I brought it to Mike and Meineke. We gave her car a free road handling check. I like free. Free is good. My money, my choice, my Meineke. Beep, bop, boop, bop, boop, beep. She says switch to progressive and you could save hundreds. Call her click today. Real cases, real people, judge to me. If you have Medicare, I have three things you'll want to hear. There's an all-in-one Medicare Advantage plan from Humana. It includes Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage, and it can save you money in so many ways. It's all in this book, and it's yours free just for calling. You'll see all the ways the plan saves you money, including prescription drugs. In fact, Humana Medicare Advantage members saved on average over $1,400 on their prescription costs last year. Oh, Jesus, this king is king and lord of lords. No man cometh unto the eternal father but by him. Before, you need to take another look at this plan. Call 1-877-710-4202. We'll send you the decision guide absolutely free. In a slightly smaller size, of course. Discover the all-in-one Medicare Advantage plan that can cut your costs and cover your prescriptions. Call 1-877-710-4202 or go to HumanaBigBook.com. The savings are too big to miss. Tonight at 11, air raids in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. People running for cover. The Middle East on the brink of war. The local impact. Plus, Operation Gut and Pump. Dozens of firefighters volunteering around the clock to help breezy point. Jesus is definitely coming back to the stuff that's going on in Jerusalem. We have to pray for Israel. Oh, Jesus, it's so soon to return. I truly believe it, but I thank him so much because I know his will is being done. And I know that he knows his vile longs for him to come and get them. We do it all. Bring them up into heaven. Cry out to God and repent kind of your sins. Ask Him to come into your heart. He loves you. Please. Thank you. Hello, Chico. telling me what happened in December. He made a phone call to me and said, do not worry about the money right now. He goes, I know you'll pay it to me when you get on your feet. And I said, okay. You owe him money for the car. You totaled his car. You and, your, no, you no, and his drunk friend. It still worked. I'm serious. It was running. I, he just signed it over. He was mad. Signed Listen it over. Me, sir. You don't know that at all. You just told me that the whole front end sunk into the riverbed. Correct. That's what you told me. I went to the impound the next day and started it up. It Not couldn't have gone to the, the impound the next day, sir, because you told me that you were in jail for two days. Correct. I made a mistake. Yeah, you made a lot of mistakes. You owned $1,500 for the car. Anything else? Basically, he was going to pay back for some money that I let him come stay with me after yeah, Mr. Ray, he, 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 he owes you $1,500 for the car. That's all. Thank you. Under siege, Mr. Bell. Judge to be continues in a moment. And on the next judge, you I gave my baby a kiss goodbye, and it kind of broke my heart. I know the business of custody. I know all about that. Like I'm not just a pretty face that they keep up here. Next judge, you
I know when I tried to start the car, it did not kick over. Oh, it was running. There's no way that car would have been able to be driven after being six hours in the water. Started up and I moved it even. It was a little over three thousand dollars to fix the car. That's another story. I won't lie, it's put a strain on it. Ryan's a great guy, man. I like him to death. We were really good friends. We hung out. We had good times. I'm hoping we can fix it. So hopefully, we're gonna get past it and see what happens.